So F122 is finally out then, which means I can do some car performance analysis to tell you guys exactly how each car performs in terms of power, drag, weight, and downforce, which is the main differentiators between the team. Now, when you start a career mode, you get this graph, and it does give you an idea of the performance of the teams, but obviously there's also some upgrades in the mix there. Even when you very first start out, before you even get to apply the upgrades, there is some upgrades already on the car to learn how you answer the questions at the start of a career mode so it's not a perfect idea so it doesn't it only really tells you what they're like at the start of career it doesn't really tell you what the car performance uh is like in grand prix mode and and what their raw figures are so that is what i'm going to do for you now so let's get into it here we go then with the trusty spreadsheet i've done these for the last couple of years and basically i look at the game files there's xmls within the game files that you can extract the raw data from the game to tell you exactly the performance of each team as you can see, I've got every single team listed along with the uh, engines they use uh, and currently got them listed just by the last year's constructor standings. Let's jump straight into it then. With the first one is going to be weight. And uh, let's just sort it by weight first of all. There we go. So Mercedes, Honda, oh, not Honda, Mercedes, Red Bull and Ferrari uh, have all got the same weight. 798 kilos is the weight in the game. Uh, I've obviously should add that this is probably only very vaguely based in real life. I very much doubt the teams are going to reveal to EA what the exact downforce numbers are and weight numbers are. It's not going to happen. They're very secret about this information. So they, they kind of guesstimate it based on uh, what they see in real life. The percentage on the right side is going to be always based on the Red Bull and Ferrari cars, which are the top cars in this game. So obviously they've got 100% and everyone from that just gets heavier. Uh, so Alpine is the next heaviest, interestingly. They rank number four in terms of the weight. Then it's Alfa Romeo, Alfa Tari, Aston Martin, McLaren. Uh, then the My Team car, which is the base My Team car, before you put any upgrades on it. Then Haas, and then Williams. With which Williams have got a 1.63% heavier car than anyone else. That's definitely the biggest impact. Now, it's interesting because in career mode, you'll find that the weight reduction updates tend to give you more performance than the downforce ones. The downforce ones are also very powerful. But the weight reduction ones are super powerful because they, they help you on traction. They help you on braking. They help you in the slow speed corners in particular. And they also help you in the, slight, in the high speed corners. The lighter the car, the quicker you go everywhere also better on tire wear of course as well so generally they're pretty op but interestingly not massive difference only 1.63 percent difference between the, the best and the worst it's not a huge amount but there it is that's the raw figures that we give and of course i will as always i will do an update video when they do release a performance patch later in the game cycle when we kind of get a bit of a better idea uh, of the, the team pecking order which obviously is still in flux at the moment Let's move on then. The next one is going to be drag. Now, once again, we'll order it by drag initially. And uh, so this one, we find that the Red Bull and Ferrari cars, which again are identical in terms of performance, are not the top performing cars in terms of drag, perhaps unsurprisingly. Alpha Tari actually come out top in the game uh, with around about 2% less drag uh, than Red Bull and Ferrari, which is, seems fairly significant to me, along with Alpine as well, pretty much the same. I'm not sure why they're showing 0 0.01, 0 0.02 when they're identical figures, but it is, oh, I see at the top there, they're not actually quite identical figures because I have to take an average for that number. So that, that's what it is. So just about Alpha Tari are the, are the slightly less draggy car than Haas and Alpine. All quite similar though. So they'll all be really quick in a straight line. So if you want to pick a car that's very quick in a straight line, there's your cars. Uh, then you've got Red Bull and Ferrari, which again, we're basing our numbers off, off Red Bull and Ferrari. So they're 100%. Uh, then we've got Aston Martin, who's got uh, quite a significant amount. Actually, 1.5% more drag than Ferrari Red Bull. Mercedes, pretty draggy car. Almost 3% more drag than Red Bull and Ferrari. Uh, Alfa Romeo and Williams, similar amount of drag as well. So interesting to see that Mercedes is similarly draggy to, to, to those fairly significantly slower cars, particularly the Williams. Uh, and then we've got McLaren and my team joined uh, as the most draggy cars in the game. 3.5% more draggy than the red the red ball so that leads to around about a five percent difference in drag between alpha tauri and mclaren which is quite significant and i've actually noticed this myself already uh in the in the two-player career that i've been doing with Tio the mclarens really were struggling to overtake my aston martin and there's there's a two percent difference again the maths isn't perfect like that but two percent difference between the two and it was noticeable in the game of course setup comes into it as well um but that's the baseline figures for those now, to do a bit of a sanity set to make sure that these numbers were correct that we've extracted from the XML files from the game, we did a little test around Baku. What we did is we went in time trial mode, default setup for every single car, uh, and we just drove down the Baku straight because it's the longest straight and we can reach VMAX, which is 
the maximum speed the car will do. Time trial is great as well because the ERS modes are locked, the uh, fuel modes are locked. There's nothing you can do to speed the car up in a straight line other than open DRS, whereas in a race you have obviously the overtake button, your ERS charge level, all that kind of thing. So yes, we did that. We reached the VMAX level, a very, very scientific test of each and every car to make sure that the order here was about right. Now, in theory, drag isn't everything, um, but it should still give us the rough pecking order we saw here, which is pretty much exactly what we saw in terms of speed, but not a huge difference in terms of actual raw speed, interestingly, at the end. Great. Um, I should as well, DRS is absolutely identical. I'm, I'm showing you the differences in the cars here. If you don't see, uh, you know, we're not finished yet, but if you don't see uh, something listed here, I assume it's identical to between the cars. That includes the ERS systems. That also includes the DRS systems. They're absolutely identical between the cars. But yes, so what we did find was that the drag was absolutely identical, uh, or, or the order of the drag was, was, was absolutely identical to our test that we did in the game, albeit by, by a small margin. But that's a little sanity test there, just to make sure these numbers are absolutely correct. Let's move on then to, we'll look at both downforce numbers next. So we've got the front and rear downforce here. Um, once again, we'll order it by downforce. And uh, unsurprisingly, we see the quickest cars at the top of this particular one, Red Bull Ferrari again they're an absolute identical chassis uh so they are absolutely absolutely drawn the, again the raw number is just one um they don't actually adjust it uh uh as in it's not like a real world figure it's not like a i don't know kilograms of downforce or or or, or anything like that i don't know it's just a number which is one Next up is Mercedes. Again, unsurprising. We probably see that in real life as well. 0 0.985. And again, I will add, there's no other differences. So obviously, porpoising is not in the game, so that won't factor into it. Also, there's no other differences in terms of how the car generates the downforce. For example, if a setup works on one car, it should work on the other car. That being said, the front and rear downforce is not identical. For example, so I'm currently ordered by front downforce. If you have a look at the Haas and the Williams teams, if I now order by rear downforce... They swap around. They're the only ones that do, though. So although the setup should, in theory, be identical across the cars, because these figures are the only ones that change, as the Haas has got a better front end but a worse rear end than the Williams, in theory, it could make a slight difference on that particular car. But it's a small difference. For example, the, the game dynamically generates downforce based on the ride height of the car. So if you're bottoming out, uh, just like in porpoising in real life, you will be losing downforcing, although porpoising itself isn't the game. If you're going over a curb, you will lose downforce when that happens. That should be identical across all the cars, though. Hopefully, that kind of makes some sense. But yes, just go back to the, to, to the straight order. We've got Mercedes in third place with around about 1.5% uh, less downforce than the, the Red Bull Ferrari, which is fairly significant. Then it's Alpine up next uh, with 4% less front downforce. Again, I'm not going to really talk about the rear downforce because it's quite similar overall. 4% less. Uh, then we get the Alfa Romeo, uh, which has got 8% less downforce, so quite big jumps there. So if you jump in the Alpine, you should be able to be best of the rest in theory, because we also see Alpine are very, very good in terms of drag. Not, uh, I don't know, similar in terms of weight, actually. So, so Alpine, uh, pretty much all counts. Alpine should, in theory, be best of the rest. So if you, if you want a car that can maybe bring a challenge to the front cars without being one of the front cars, I reckon Alpine would be a good choice uh, for any potential career mode. Uh, then we've got Alfa Romeo up next. Alfa Tauri, yeah, I would not, again, they're all quite similar, really, in terms of downforce. I mean, there's a 4% jump between Alpine and Alfa Romeo. Uh, and then from there, there's there's less than a 4% jump from Alfa Romeo right down to the bottom team. So that's a really tight battle uh, in, in that area from Alfa Romeo down to Aston Martin. So again, if you're doing a career mode and you're jumping in one of these cars, uh, make sure that you do downforce because that's that that's only a small difference you could quite easily have more downforce even if you're williams a few downforce updates later you could quite easily be alfa romeo uh and and or be, be have more downforce than alfa romeo and, and be ahead of them again i'm not going to talk too much about rear downforce you know you've got the raw numbers there if you want to have a look at them you can see for example that mercedes have got one and a half percent less front downforce but only one percent less rear downforce so in theory the mercedes should be this slightly more stable car compared to the red bull ferrari it will just have less overall downforce and again i'll let you do your own analysis based on those raw numbers there uh in fact i will put a link to this this sheet down in the description so if you want to have a little look at the the raw sheet you're more than welcome finally then is the power numbers and interestingly in this game we see absolutely identical powers across every single engine now as far as i'm aware this is the first game that's done that in previous games they've sort of had classes of downforce they've had two classes and they've chosen to put uh the engines in each so normally the Mercedes was in the top class, then it was the second class was, was the other three. Um, in last year's game, it changed slightly, but 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 this year's game, they decided to give them all absolutely identical power. And again, I should reiterate, 
anything that's not listed here is identical across the cars now there may be minor differences with, with, with chassis and with the, the front and rear downforce and that kind of thing but for the most part it, it's pretty much identical so again ERS systems absolutely identical uh, fuel efficiency absolutely identical all those kind of things in theory identical across the car again in reality not quite identical fuel efficiency is a great example um, they all get the same power the, the, the engine in theory always uses the same fuel but drag will come into it um, so in theory Alpha Tauri should use a little bit less fuel I think than the McLaren although it could be the other way around because the Alpha Tauri would end up revving a bit higher in this straight my logic is they'd be in this straight for a little bit less time in theory um, and then to add to that for a further complication get a bit complicated here the Red Bull should be able to break a bit later because it's got more downforce and carry a bit more speed uh, so in theory, you know, it, it gets a bit complicated, which is why I'm kind of shying away from saying they're completely identical in every other way. But on paper, they in theory, they're identical in every way other than the figures you see in front of you. Anyway, I think that's enough waffle. I think that's, we got a bit technical in this video, but a bit more so than I intended to do so. But hopefully that all makes sense. As I said, I will put a link to the sheet down in the description. So if you want to go and grab the raw data, you are more than welcome to. Again, this is just straight from the game's XMLs. I used a, a little sanity test against the drag just to make sure that 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 what the data we produced was correct, which it is. But yeah, that's the differences between the cars. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I'm on the way to 100,000 subscribers. We're still a little way off yet, but that is the aim. I want to get a beautiful plaque back on my shelf back there. So do subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.